Hello, welcome to Frontiers here on Sparks 1524. I'm Nathaniel Miller. When I retired from the Navy at the end of 2017, I decided to go on an extended road trip just to kind of clear my head, decompress from active duty, and plan my future. There are four places I have wanted to see since I was a child. The Grand Canyon, Yellowstone National Park, Mount St. Helens, and Alaska. Well, I was on the eastern seaboard tooling around at a couple places and looking west to plan my trip to those places, it kind of hit me that if I'm going to go that far west to see places that widely scattered along the western seaboard, I might as well see all 50 states. Thus, the Grand Tour was born. And it did work out. I saw all 50 states and a little of Canada. As I headed west and got across the Mississippi, a tower of rock in northeastern Wyoming caught my eye, and I realized I needed to put that on the itinerary. Now, let's jump back to 1977. Steven Spielberg's Close Encounters of the Third Kind comes out, and it's part of the what you could call the science fiction revolution in cinema. The late 70s had a lot of great science fiction movies, like Star Wars, Superman the Movie, and Close Encounters. Also, Alien. My brother and I got to see Star Wars in the theater, but we were too young, way too young for a movie like Alien, and too young for one like Close Encounters, so we didn't see it until it was on videotape in the early 80s. And that kind of dates me right there, videotape. Does anybody else remember the Betamax VHS Wars? Anyway, my first memory of Devil's Tower was Richard Dreyfuss's character sculpting it out of mashed potatoes because he was having a vision of it sent by the aliens. And Steven Spielberg had the alien mothership land there. That was the setting for the landing of the mothership where humanity finally meets, officially meets this other race. I thought it was a fictitious place until later in middle school when I came across it in a textbook and found out that, whoa, Spielberg didn't make it up. It's real. It was one. Of, it fascinated me, and I knew I wanted to see it, but unlike, say, the Grand Canyon or Mount St. Helens, it kind of fell out of the forefront of my mind and was back rattling around in there. A lot of things rattle around in there, and that was one of them. So when I was on the Grand Tour and I saw it, I knew I need to go visit it. Devil's Tower is sadly often overlooked because Yellowstone National Park dominates most of western Wyoming, and Yellowstone is a grand place. But Devil's Tower is a fascinating place in its own right, in fact, it is so fascinating that President Theodore Roosevelt designated Devil's Tower as the United States' first ever national monument back in 1906. The name Devil's Tower is a classic example of how a mistranslation became so entrenched in our language that it stuck as the proper name for the place, even though it really has nothing to do with the original name of the place. The indigenous peoples of the area refer to the monolith by such names as Grey Horn Butte. Tree Rock, and The Place Where Bears Live. U.S. maps during the latter half of the 19th century called it Bear Lodge or Bears Lodge, a translation of the Lakota name for the formation. Many native stories across several different tribes include elements of a great bear clawing the tower into its distinctive appearance. Depending on the story, the bear was pursuing someone or else it was climbing the tower for reasons of its own. Either way, no native tales associate the monolith with evil spirits, bad gods, or the like. The name Devil's Tower got slapped on the site after Colonel Richard Irving Dodge sent an expedition to study the tower. When the group came back, they said the local tribes referred to it as the Bad God's Tower. Dodge then put Bad God's Tower into proper English, rendering it as Devil's Tower. There is no way to know whether the mistranslation of the place's name into Devil's Tower was deliberate or accidental. Certainly, there's plenty of examples in human history of a conquering people changing the name of a place without regards to the indigenous population. We know that kind of sad history happened in our country at places, too. However, there's also the possibility that it was simply a comically ironic result of two people of vastly different cultures and languages trying to communicate in good faith. As much as it's possible Dodge and his men deliberately changed the name of the place, it's entirely possible as well that they simply misunderstood the native speakers, and instead of hearing something that they translated into Bear Lodge or Bear Mountain, that they translated it accidentally into something referring to a bad god, a devil. There's no way to know, but that story is part of the fabric of the story of Devil's Tower. Oh, and a quick note on the name Devil's Tower. There is no apostrophe in it. Per U.S. geological naming conventions, you don't have apostrophes in place names. Therefore, the proper spelling of Devil's Tower is D-E-V-I-L-S, no apostrophe, Tower.
If you follow me on this channel at all, you know I love volcanoes. They are fascinating structures and systems to me. If my math skills were a little better, I would have been a very happy little volcanologist. Sadly for that ambition, my math skills aren't that good. Hell, I need my computer and a calculator to help balance a checkbook. Devil's Tower is a volcanic feature, but there are many theories about how it actually formed. I want to briefly discuss two of these because I personally find them the most compelling theories based on available evidence. One theory maintains the tower is a volcanic neck. That is, Devil's Tower is the eroded remnant of an ancient volcano. According to this theory, the magma inside the volcano cooled and solidified as the system went extinct. Following this, Eons of geological uplift and erosion wore away the volcano and surrounding land, leaving only the volcano's core behind. Another theory I also think likely is that Devil's Tower is what's known as a lacolith. Lacoliths are essentially failed volcanoes. Lacoliths form when magma intrudes between rock layers, pushing up the overlying rock and forming a dome-shaped feature underground without ever actually erupting on the surface. Instead, the magma begins cooling and solidifying underground. Current theory states that Devil's Tower began forming about 40.5 million years ago. The igneous rock forming the underground dome was basalt, and one of basalt's more interesting properties is its tendency to develop hexagonal cracks along its surface as it cools. If the rock is left undisturbed to cool slowly, these cracks propagate downward, resulting in the basalt forming magnificent natural hexagonal columns. These natural basaltic columns can be found around the world, and often have been used in megalithic construction, such as at Nan Madal on the island of Pompeii in the Federated States of Micronesia. The sedimentary rock layers surrounding Devil's Tower were the beds of ancient oceans. Once the land was lifted above sea level, erosion began scouring away the softer rock, exposing the harder volcanic material. Although basalt is far more resistant to deterioration than sedimentary rock, it, too, will eventually begin weathering and breaking apart. The rough-and-tumble talus rocks surrounding Devil's Tower are the fragmented remains of the tower itself as it slowly, inevitably crumbles over millions of years. I finally visited Devil's Tower on August 11, 2018. Now, the nearest hotel I could find was about an hour away. So I got up before dawn and drove across the Wyoming countryside into the sunrise, and that itself was an incredible experience. When I saw Devil's Tower on the horizon, I was still well over half an hour away. But you could already tell exactly what you were looking at. The shape was so distinct that you knew where you were going. It was a very impressive and almost overwhelming feeling as you're driving for so long. This rock formation, this rock tower goes from here and just starts growing and it doesn't stop. It's both an overwhelming, a humbling, and a very awe-inspiring feeling. Devil's Tower is a fascinating place for a geologist, naturalist, anthropologist, or simply a casual tourist. The landscape is certainly not level ground and doesn't make for easy hiking at all. However, the geology, geography, and scenery induced me to hike around the tower twice, and that was just on the tower loop trail at the base of the formation. The tower loop trail allows you to have a close encounter with this amazing structure, giving you a sense of the size of the basaltic columns and the force they exert when they eventually do fracture and fall. Wildlife here is protected by law, so the local animals have little fear of humans. Much like Yellowstone, Devil's Tower is a place where you can have a close encounter with a doe and her fawns enjoying a lazy afternoon right next to the monument's many trails. Although the animals are generally placid, remember, they are wild animals, so keep your distance. They might not fear humans, but they sure won't hesitate to defend themselves if they feel threatened. While you're visiting the area and exploring the landscape, you will see many places where there are strips of cloth or small bundles of cloth tied to the trees. These are prayer cloths and medicine bundles that are placed there by the local native peoples to whom this land is sacred. Don't mess with these if you see them. To these people, those medicine bundles, those prayer cloths are just as sacred as a crucifix is to a Roman Catholic. In fact, there are peoples in the area to whom it is disrespectful to even photograph the medicine bundles and prayer cloths. Not all of them, but many have that belief, so just out of respect for them, I didn't take any photos of these objects. Devil's Tower rises 867 feet, or 264 meters, from its base to its blunt, weathered summit. Hikers like me clearly love exploring the landscape around the base of the tower, but this is also a magnet for those who want to make the ascent. 
Using a series of wooden ladders and pegs, local ranchers William Rogers and Willard Ripley made the first known ascent of Devil's Tower on July 4, 1893. Today, remnants of these ladders and pegs are still visible, even from ground level, and constitute a unique part of the monument's heritage. There are some controversial aspects to climbing the tower. This is a sacred site to many native peoples. There is an unofficial ban on climbing in June because many of the indigenous peoples hold sacred ceremonies during that month. Now, please note I said unofficial. The federal government cannot and will not enforce that ban, but many local climbers and even many tourists do respect it out of respect for the native peoples who might be conducting a ceremony while these people want to climb. Light pollution is nearly non-existent around Devil's Tower, so it's a great place to watch the stars while engaging in some spectacular nighttime photography. I didn't see any alien motherships, but I did get a wonderful nighttime show as the stars wheeled overhead, the tower itself a silhouette blocking out the sky. I sat gazing heavenward with numerous other photographers for a long time. We barely spoke, and when we did, it was in whispers so we wouldn't break the quiet and disturb anyone nearby. Devil's Tower is a fascinating geological formation. There is a lot of natural history around there, but there's also an incredible pageant of a collision of many human cultures. If you go to Wyoming to visit Yellowstone, and Yellowstone is definitely worth it, and I'll talk about that on another video later on, take some time to drive over to northeastern Wyoming and visit Devil's Tower. It's worth at least a day trip. Odds are you won't see any aliens, but you never know. I appreciate your time, and I appreciate you taking this journey with me to Devil's Tower. Please don't forget to like, share this video, and if you like what I do here, go ahead and subscribe. But until we meet here again on Sparks 1524, I hope you keep chasing that horizon and always go and do some great things.